Welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about Unity. Uh, my name is Christos Matskas. I am a product marketing manager for Unity and mobile. And I have really great interest in this product. Uh, you probably have had a lot of announcements throughout the two days so far. So .NET Core, Visual Studio, and Visual Studio uh, for Mac. Uh, so today, what I want to show you and um, why I wanted to pick up this session is because I wanted to showcase that with .NET, you can build some amazing things, including games, right? Uh, our agenda for today is very simple. I'm going to introduce Unity to you just to uh, let you know what it is and what you can build with it. And then I'll show you how to get started if you've never done Unity gaming before, like uh, I haven't. So um, it's a great experience to see how you can set up your machine. Then I will show you why you want to use Visual Studio or Visual Studio for Mac to write your games. Uh, we'll do a few demos just to showcase the capabilities. And finally, we'll talk about why Visual Studio is uh, so well aligned with uh, Unity and what makes it such a great product for debugging and writing your games or your uh, 3D real-time applications. And hopefully at the end, uh, we'll leave you with some learning materials and uh, set you up for the next uh, few sessions of the day. So getting started, Unity, of course, is, a, is a, the most widely used real-time 3D uh, framework. It started as a game engine, but now they're targeting uh, different industries. So the, their goal there is to give you the tools to create applications for not just games, but uh, 3D real-time applications. Um, they're the most widely uh, known engine, and it's built on .NET. So if you're a .NET developer, there's nothing stopping you from writing games uh, starting today. And the nice thing about Unity is that you don't just have one platform, but you have over 25 different platforms, whether you want to develop games for Xbox, whether you want to build solutions for that run on Windows or Mac OS. Obviously, mobile is very big. Mobile games are fantastic these days, and many people monetize on that. So if you want to build things for that, then that's also there. TV OS, the, the platform is insane. So taking your .NET skills with uh, Unity and our IDs, means that you can build almost anything for any platform out there. And uh, getting started, obviously, uh, the first thing that you need to do and you need to be aware of is that uh, ever since 2019.2 uh, uh, version of Unity, things have changed quite a bit on how you install uh, Unity. So there are two ways to get started with Unity. One is you go to the Unity website and you download the installer, and then that allows you to actually um, go and get the bits that you need. So it's a Unity-first experience. And uh, many, de many developers that know Unity will start from there. But if you're already a Visual Studio developer, there's a way for you to add the Unity workload to allow you to, uh, to get started. So we'll, we'll see how you do both. So if you're inside Visual Studio, uh, you select the game development with Unity, and that will download the Unity dependencies for you. And um, the other way around, if you're already on Unity, then you can go and add the components that you need. So if you are on, v on Mac OS, then it will download the Visual Studio for Mac components. If you're on Windows, it's clever enough to let you know that you need to download Visual Studio. So um, I already have uh, both the, the installers here. So if you're in Visual Studio installer, you're just going to modify. Uh, it kicks off the modification of the latest uh, version that you're using. W today we're using 16.3, which is the latest and greatest. And if I scroll down here, uh, you'll find that I already have selected the game development with Unity. Um, if you don't have it selected, you add that, and we'll bring down all the necessary uh, dependencies. So I can close that off. And if I go to the Unity Hub, um, up until this point, that didn't exist. So you would download directly Unity and get started. But now uh, they have a Unity Hub, like the Visual Studio installer, and it allows you to add multiple versions of Unity because certain things may not be working with the latest version of Unity, especially their component engine. Um, so here, you just come to Install. You add your installation, and then uh, from here, you can also add modules. So in this instance, uh, you'll notice that we already have the uh, Unity game development checked in because we went from the Visual Studio workflow first. But if you don't have it, if you start with Unity, then that's the way you get started. And that's all you need. Uh, as soon as you do that, um, if we jump back to the slides, you'll notice that there are certain things both in, uh, inside Unity and uh, the Visual Studio installer that show you that everything has been configured correctly. So we're ready to go with these ones. And what this one is telling here for the external tools is that if you are working with Unity and you are on Windows, it has already recognized Visual Studio 2019 as present. And I've already checked in the editor attaching because one of the big things that you want to do is as you write your code for your games, you want to make sure 
that um, you can debug the, the code, right? And you want to do it in Visual Studio because it's the best editor out there. So, um, so next we're going to look at why would you want to use Visual Studio or Visual Studio for Mac over, say, Notepad or OneNote or whatever. There are, if, you, if you've been developing for a long time with Visual Studio, you probably know uh, some of these capabilities. But if you're not, if you're new to, uh, to Visual Studio or if you're just focused on Unity, then I would like to highlight some of the big features here. Obviously, refactoring is big. As your code grows, you want to be able to quickly jump into the code and change things, move them around, uh, clear your code and what have you. So you can always uh, use the mouse and right click on a line or you can uh, instantiate the command by using control or command dot. And you can go straight to definitions. I will show this in a, in a demo very quickly. You can navigate to decompile assemblies. Um, you can get su suggestions for variable names. The ID guides you to, uh, through a lot of uh, good practices and would try to uh, give you the tools that you need to build um, good code. Uh, so if you're creating a, a, a method that you want to duplicate, for example, then we can quickly do that in the code. There are a lot of tools there to make you more productive with uh, the scripting in your games. multi character mode uh, editing, we got global search. Uh, that's very big because if you have a big code base uh, as, as your code base grows, you want to be able to quickly search and find uh, different components in your code. Um, going to enclosing block if you have big blocks of code. And finally, whether you're working on Visual Studio or Visual Studio for Mac and you like a specific set of bindings, then we also give you the ability to actually switch the bindings around. So if you're in Visual Studio for Mac, there's a setting there that tells you, I want to use my Visual Studio uh, key bindings. And um, since I have both machines as well, I like to have that consistency across the, the two IDs. So you can do that as well. Uh, next one, we have IntelliCode. Uh, some people may already know IntelliSense, and IntelliCode is, is the next level. It's the AI-guided uh, uh, IntelliSense that you get inside your uh, code, and it's always context-aware as well. I will do a demo on how IntelliCode works and how can, it can improve your game um, coding. Uh, Visual Studio Live, sir, this is a, a life-changing experience because um, up until this point, um, you maybe have been developing in teams or uh, developing in isolation, and you always get stuck, right? Um, you, there's always the internet, but uh, there's nothing as somebody out there that can help you out. So using uh, LiveShare, you can actually set up a session to share your existing uh, coding environment with somebody else. So th there could be somebody sitting three hours away from you watching TV on their, um, on their you know, on the Surface Go, and then you call them and say, I'm, I'm stuck with this um, solution here in my game. I, I don't know what to do. Can you help me out? Uh, you, you can actually spin up a session inside Visual Studio. They could be sitting on their sofa, um, playing with their Visual Studio code, doing some web development. They don't need to have the exact same setup. You'll be sharing your environment. So LiveShare allows you to unblock. Uh, it allows you to share your environment and find solutions to problems. Sometimes you can use that for as a learning experience as well. Um, so that's really important. I will show you how to spin up a live share session if you want to. Uh, we have built-in source control. Obviously, if you're using Git, and most people these days tend to use Git, and we do have built-in uh, ID support there. We have real-time code analysis. That's very important as you write your code. You want to have uh, real-time feedback. You don't want to have to write your code, save it, and then build it, only to find out that something is not um, as you would like it to be. That also includes uh, some of the things that I'll be talking later, like Rosden analyzers and getting immediate feedback about the quality or the, the errors in your code. Editor config is very big. Um, lots of people talk throughout uh, the, the conference so far about editor config and how it ties very well with Visual Studio or Visual Studio for Mac. And for those people that have not used editor config before, it's, it's a way to actually define a code, um, how the code should look and uh, behave how you want your variables to be declared, how you want your um, spaces and tabs to be declared in your code if you want to go down that route. And uh, because it's a file that is checked into your uh, solution, it follows the code everywhere you go. So if a new developer joins the team, then editor config allows them to pick up the exact same code habits if you want uh, and apply them to their code base as they code. Uh, code Lens gives you a very quick glance about uh, how your code um, has changed over the times and over the years, how many check-ins you had for a specific method and what have you. 
And then some other capabilities is obviously if you're changing across machines, if you work at the, at the office and then you come home and you pick up the, the work, you can actually synchronize your uh, settings for the IDs across those devices and across those environments. So you can have a consistent Windows layout, you can have a very consistent um, look and feel. So if you prefer dark themes, then that's how it works. And then we have custom screen layouts, which you can save as well and then take them with you. And if you didn't know, we already support light and dark themes on your ID uh, to make it uh, look and feel as you would like to. Uh, so next, I'm going to jump to a couple of demos and we're going to talk about some of the things I have shown you already. So uh, moving back to my code, and we have talked about refactoring. So um, usually when you are sitting in your uh, ID, you can uh, control dot and then um, you get IntelliSense and says, you know, we can remove those uh, usings and uh, you know, make sure that you don't have them anymore. You can also fix on all document or projects and all solutions. So if you're brave enough, you can apply that setting across the whole solution. So let's do the document over here. You'll see it says I can preview your changes and then you can apply them. Um, we have uh, things like, let me do another one. Um, you can see here, we, again, we have fixes. We talked about the multi caret editing. So if I were to say uh, add new methods, I could do control alt dot and then select multiple locations or control shift dot, sorry, control alt. Select one, two, that seems to not working. Okay, I'll move on. But we can also do um, multi-line editing. So if, if you're here and you want to change from private to public, you can go public and automatically applies. Again, we do support multi caret editing across uh, the files, but let me change that back to private. We don't want to break our code. Okay, so this one, I did talk about editor config, and um, the easiest way to uh, showcase this is if I jump into my files, let me just see desktop, and I can, I already have an editor config. The easiest way to get started, I find, is if you jump to the um, Roslyn repo uh, on GitHub. Um, they have uh, already an editor config that is pretty well tweaked uh, so far. So as soon as we drop the editor config there, you'll see we have all these different settings. Um, obviously, you can also change them to fit your uh, team's needs. And that means that if you want to break or if you want to go from a warning to an error, then it allows you to go that. So you can see here the severity set the suggestion, but you can change it to uh, error and then that will cause uh, everybody to actually go and fix their issues. But if I go back up, uh, I'll pick up something that's very well debated and a heated conversation. So if I go with tab and save that, um, it's saving, it's thinking about it, there you go. So if I switch back to my code, you'll notice that I right now I have four spaces everywhere, but if I uh, do control K and control D, automatically applies the editor config settings to my code. That means that as soon as you, uh, you, you add your editor config, you can go back and apply those settings to your files, which is fantastic. That, uh, that means that your team can have a consistent code base there. So uh, let me just, uh, don't save that one, obviously. Let me just go back and revert that because I'm pretty sure my team will be upset about the tabs, space, save that. And again, that applies. Um, I did say, uh, I did mention about LiveSir. So um, if you've never used LiveSir, it, it's available on v, Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. Um, you don't have to have the exact same environment on the target machine, the one that you're sharing with, but you can go into uh, LiveSir. It's already um, kicked off a sharing session. I don't have anyone right now to share with, uh, but if I go into more info, you'll notice that it says, just copy this URL, send it to somebody else, and with that, they can actually um, join your session and share exactly what you see here, which is fantastic, especially if you're uh, in games development, you're new and you need support uh, throughout the, your coding session. So I'm just gonna stop that live, sir, in case anybody wants to join. And um, I'll go back to some of the other things I talked. So let's uh, see here, what else do we have? Uh, code lens, we're building source control. Yeah, let me just uh, show you this one. So with source control, again, it will automatically pick up. I, I, I was using Git locally here, so you'll notice that there's a lot of files that have changed throughout my uh, editing. You can also use an, an, um, an exclude, so git, git ignore to exclude some of the files because obviously you don't want to check in everything uh, on, the, on your 
uh, source code and uh, like in dark themes uh, with the settings. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, you can create custom settings as well. So if you want to have a very uh, specific layout for your uh, games development, you want to ignore your debug, you want to ignore other things that are not relevant to you or windows that are not like toolbox, then you can come here, create your session, uh, your, um, your layout, and then you can apply it anywhere you are. These settings do carry with you as soon as you log into Visual Studio with your account. So if I were to change to a web layout, it will ask me whether I want to do that, and then it does it. There you go. It's very different, right? I want to go back to my default one because I don't like this one. I should have created one for uh, Unity, obviously, but it's fine. Um, so I'll go back to my default layout. There you go. Applying this one. Fantastic. Uh, anything else we want to highlight here? And in Telecode, I will, I will show you in a bit, and I'll, I, I will explain why uh, real-time analyzers, uh, we have Roslyn. If you, know, if you don't know about Roslyn, you can download and install Roslyn analyzers. The ID also comes with some default analyzers. So here, as I type, it might come up with a, a suggestion saying, you're missing an underscore prefix, or you could make this uh, field read-only. So straight away, it actually tries to make me a better developer by providing some suggestions for my code. And uh, ROS analyzers are very powerful because they run at real time as you type your code, so you don't have to again, again save and build before you find out that there are some warnings against your, your code. Right, moving on, I want to uh, highlight why uh, Visual Studio is uh, so important with, um, with Unity and why when you use them together, you s they set your code on fire, right? You become a lot more efficient. Obviously, IntelliCode now has been uh, designed to work with most of the C Sharp uh, default projects, but uh, our team is working to uh, bring the Unity API messages into IntelliCode, which means that we're scanning uh, our code bases out there to make sure that we pick up the best um, skills for your, um, for your Unity games. And IntelliCode goes one step above IntelliSense because, as I, as I said earlier on, it's context uh, sensitive, it knows exactly where you are and what you're doing, and will provide you with the best ideas as you type. Uh, Visual Studio does come with superior debugging. We have the ability to set up trace points and breakpoints and really dig through the code. Uh, there have been already sessions that show advanced tips and tricks on how to debug using Visual Studio, so I would uh, urge you to go and see these. Um, we also added a Unity Project Explorer, which makes your uh, experience slightly better, so if I switch back to my Visual Studio, you'll notice that uh, I don't have it down here, but if I search for Unity, uh, you'll notice that it has um, Unity API reference and Unity Project Explorer. So that brings up, it gives you a more simplified version or a look and feel of your files and your assets, so you don't have to go through the standard solution explorer, so we have an optimized experience for you. Um, attach and play, going back to the ID, um, up until this point, we only had attached, so you had to spin up the game, uh, and so you had to spin up the, the Visual Studio attached to Unity, and then you had to go back to the Unity editor and spin up the game, and then set breakpoints here in order to be able to attach. But now, um, lo and behold, we have attached to Unity and play straight away, so it will kick off your uh, game end to end. So if I were to try this one, uh, and we can also put a breakpoint over here, uh, we'll kick off my um, awesome game. It's not, it's not awesome, but I did spend an afternoon writing this game. So I wanted to prove to myself that as a .NET developer, I can write something in Unity in and not a lot of time. So within one afternoon, let's say four or five hours, I was able to uh, put this thing together. So let's see if it's already kicked off. The breakpoint is there. If I'll go to my game, I'm trying to switch now, maybe. Right, let me stop that one. Bring it back to focus. I think it's right. Something, something, resolution, something. Okay, so that's my game. It's a very basic game. I created a car and I put some obstacles on the road. And what I'm trying to do is circumnavigate around them. So I had no knowledge of that. I've used some ready made components. So um, Unity makes it very easy to actually create a whole world out of ready made assets. So all you have to do literally is write the experience or the behavior around these objects and how you want them to behave. Right now, um, before even starting coding anything, this, these were just dumb objects sitting on our scene. So what I did is act actually add user controls to be able to navigate around the car. And then 
I wanted to, uh, to also add the behavior of moving the camera behind the car so it follows the car as it goes through. And later in the game, uh, or uh, in my talk, we're going to add one behavior, which is exploding crates. Because there's no fun if there's no explosion, right? So I wanted to make sure that if you touch the crate, it just explodes. Uh, so right now, uh, we're here. Uh, you see it actually has kicked off the game. So I can see, I think, there you go. We can navigate around the, the space. It's very basic. I showed them to my daughters and they were not very impressed because, you know, they play Xbox and then when I saw them this, I was really excited, but the excitement did not really uh, pan out with them. So, um, as you can see, I can already control it and the code that I needed to write to make this happen was literally a few lines of code. So, in this instance, we have four lines of code that uh, control the uh, forward and backward and the sideways uh, movement and then uh, one more line of code that actually allows us to uh, control the camera. Now, I did speak about IntelliCode and how it works for us. So if I were to do transform here and then do a dot, you'll notice that uh, we do have position, local scale, parent, local position, and rotation. Um, it's the IntelliCode here, it tells the, the code that you might want to use this first because these are the most common ones in the context of the update. So maybe you want to pick these ones up rather than try to find through the API, as you can see, it's a, it's a massive API here. I have no idea what I need to do. So IntelliCode really helps me focus on the things that really matter. And the nice thing about that is that um, if you go into an if statement, then it will actually change the whole um, experience. So let's say if I go down here and say if, and then transform, and dot. You notice that it's changed slightly, so um, it gives us the root, which was not there before. It also gives us a child object, so it looks for, uh, like, if transform has child objects, you might want to do something. So IntelliCode uh, hones in into those, uh, skill or those parts of the API that do make sense to you. Right. Um, I did uh, talk about IntelliCode. Yes, and one more thing about IntelliCode, right? We already have the automatic IntelliCode, which does a lot of things out of the box for us, but you can take it one step further by training IntelliCode to apply specifically to your code base. So if you search for IntelliCode up here, IntelliCode, you notice that there's a IntelliCode model management. And what this does is allows you to submit your code to our um, IntelliCode engine to create the model that uh, you need to apply to your machine. And that makes it very specific to your code base. You can also share that with the rest of the team and that makes everybody more efficient. So if you have a large code base with a lot of classes that you want to be able to quickly bring to the surface, then IntelliCode allows you to do that. And you also have a custom model for Unity to allow you to even be more efficient. Right, by jump, jumping back into our Unity, um, the last thing I wanted to do is obviously show you uh, some of the, the good things in Visual Studio, we do have the ability now to create C Sharp files, Sader files, and Enum files directly in the Unity project uh, in the Explorer. Uh, faster project reloading, so we want to make sure that as you change your uh, code from Unity, then the project reloads much faster, especially if you add a lot of assets. We want to have reduced time for debugging, so no, not uh, many delays. The team has really focused on better performance. We also want to support more unsafe uh, code debugging options. Um, and we have Unity specific analyzers and diagnostics inside Visual Studio to make you look better and uh, have better code. And finally, we're suppressing non-applicable C Sharp diagnostics. Uh, so with that, I wanted to go back to our game and just add the explosion because, as I said, I promised you explosions, so we'll see some explosions. Um, this time, I'm going to go via Unity. So here, you'll notice I have a, an obstacle. Uh, which I'm actually using to create lots of obstacles in our game because we have about six of them. It doesn't have any uh, behavior or code, so what I'm going to do now is add a component. Uh, and in this instance, we're going to add some C Sharp files, so a new script. Uh, we'll call it um, Collision Detection because it's actually colliding with something. Collision Helper. There you go. A new script, Collision Helper, create an add. So this will add it to our obstacle. Now, because everything else in our code base uh, uh, inherits from that base obstacle, all I need to do now is go into our, uh, where did that go? Oh, it's still loading, right, okay, still fixing it. Adding it, there you go, so the collision helper here. Now, uh, that file is here, let's tidy up a little bit. We won't have a nice 
tidy solution and I'm going to jump into my collision helper. This will open inside Visual Studio. Uh, I'm going to delete these ones because I don't need them. And I'm going to add my snippet. So what we're doing here, very basic. Took me probably two hours to figure it out. Four lines of code and there you go. Uh, what we're doing is we're getting the game object. We need to make sure that it's only the vehicle that collides with our, um, with our crate, right? Because if everything else collides, then we don't really need to know about that. Then we grab the particle system that actually throws the explosion. We make sure that we have a, a handle on that. In fact, I should have used the curly brackets that uh, Mud stopped on the first day to check whether it's null or not. Um, and then we need to make sure that it's not playing right now and then kick off the destroyment. So uh, I'm going to kick off the game now. Let's save this one and then kick off the game, blow something up and then we can move into questions. Uh, there you go. It's going to take a couple of seconds. And explosion, right? That's it. Four lines of code and you have an explosive crate. Right, last slide for me for today is all about uh, what you can do next. So if you, are, uh, if you are keen on learning what you can do next, we just go and download Visual Studio at the Unity. We recently launched some amazing uh, learning tutorials with Unity in collaboration. So go there. We have more than uh, six hours of learning materials. And then uh, we also have a how to build your first game. Our PM, John Miller, wrote this one. It goes through step by step on how to use Visual Studio for Mac and build your own tic-tac-toe game. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining me today.